Hi girls, welcome to the Women Rock Show. Today we're gonna to talk about finding God in any situation. Show. My name is Pastor Jessica Roth, and I am honored that you would watch the show today. We are going to press into some scriptures today, hear from heaven, and see what God has for us as girls in the house. There are so many powerful celebrations of scripture, and I believe God wants to speak specific things to our hearts. You know, the society today wants to invade us with discouragement and brokenness, but God actually has so many good plans for us, and he has so many things ahead of us. So let's dive into these scriptures and find out what God says about us. You know, you were formed in your mother's womb by God. You were God's plan. You are special and you are unique. And so I believe that scripture wants to jump out at us, speak into our hearts, show us who we really are, not what the world says, but what God says. So in our time together, we are going to be covering some scriptures in Jeremiah today. Yeah, we're changing over. I know we were talking about Proverbs 31 before, but now we're gonna step into Jeremiah. It's a new series. And when we said yes to Jesus, we said yes to all that the kingdom of heaven has for us in our lives. And so let's dive into this and let's learn from the Old Testament. Let's see what verses we can pull out of it and apply into our lives today. In our time together, we are going to cover some topics to live in, and we will be reading out of the book of Jeremiah, so get your Bibles out, girls. You don't want to do it without the Word of God, and get ready for what God has for you, because when we said yes, God said, all right, here you go, and he's going to pour it out on us. Look, go with me to Jeremiah. We're going to talk about Jeremiah, and I wanted to kind of set this story up in these verses. First of all, Jeremiah 29 is my favorite chapter in the Bible. I was a very broken person. I lost so many places in my life, and yet the Lord led me to Jeremiah. And in my reading through the Word of God, the Lord has been taking me through the book of Jeremiah and teaching me so many things. And so I wanted to dive into Jeremiah 29. We're going to start there. But have you ever asked yourself some questions? You know, the hard questions. Have you ever felt like, where are you, God? Do you even hear me anymore, Lord? Have you forgotten about me? I know that I've been in those places. Maybe you've even prayed for something and it didn't get the results that you wanted and it wasn't in the time frame that you were expecting it in. And you felt like, God, you've forgotten about me. Where are you? Well, we're going to dive into some verses today with people that I believe felt the same way that we have felt in our own lives. And we're going to learn from the Old Testament what God has. See, the Word is always speaking. The Word of God is alive, it is well, and is applicable to our lives today. And so when we think, oh, those are old antiquated stories, no, they are not. It is speaking to us in our lives today. And so let's apply our hearts, let's surrender, and let's let the Holy Spirit speak to us today. The Word of God is speaking to us. So Jeremiah 29, 11, let me just set you up real quick. It is a letter written to, by Jeremiah to the people of Israel. These people were exiled out and brought into Babylon. So they are not happy. They're not in a good place. They have people surrounding them that call themselves prophets and say, God is going to rescue you. God is going to rescue you. And so they are being told this and they're waiting on God to deliver them. But Jeremiah comes with a word and this is the word and we're going to pick up where Jeremiah speaks to them. So go with me to Jeremiah 29, 5 through 7. I'm going to use the Amplified Bible this time around and it says, build houses and live in them. Plant Plant gardens and eat of the fruit. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give them to your daughters in marriage, that they will bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease in number. I want to just stop for a second. Remember, they were waiting for God to deliver them, but here comes Jeremiah with a word saying, pretty much, hang out, build dwell, multiply. And he's not just talking about one generation. God is talking about a couple generations in these scriptures. So he's telling them, hey, you're going to hang out here for a while and I want you to multiply. Verse seven, we're going to pick it up. And it says, seek peace and well-being for the city where I have sent you into exile. Hold on. So God sent them into exile. That means there has to be a lesson in it. Everything God does is intentional. Everything that God moves in and happens with him is not just done by chance, but it is intentional and God has a plan and a lesson in it. And so God is saying to them, and this is their commission, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. God is asking them to pray for the city in which they're in. Babylon was bad. It was not a good place. It was not where they belonged. For in its peace, well-being will be 
and will have peace. You see, in former years, the prophets were telling them, you're going to be rescued, and here's, here is Jeremiah coming to them and saying, hey, hang out and dwell and live. That has to be such a contrasting thought in their hearts and in their minds. I can only imagine how they really felt let down by God. Or maybe they even thought, this is a false prophet. He's not real. Who's really real here? Who do I listen to? And yet God was speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was anointed by God. Jeremiah was ordained by God to speak to these children. And he called the other prophet that was speaking to them a false prophet. And if you go back in the other scriptures, you'll learn that there was a difference between the false prophet and the real prophet. And God was very serious about that. So here's God giving them a commission. Can you imagine how this felt? I know that I have felt this time in my life where God has asked me to do something and I'm going, that wasn't God. No, I don't think that was God. Have you ever done that? No, that was me. I don't think God was asking me to do that. That's too weird or uncomfortable. Or maybe he wants me to stay in this place. This is horrible. I don't like where I'm living. I don't like the circumstances in which I'm in. And yet God might be asking us to dwell there and to change the atmosphere. Why? Because we are full-time ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God's plan will always be in play no matter what is happening in our world. God's mission will be accomplished. And you are his hands and you are his feet everywhere you go. You see, these children, they were waiting for God to rescue them. And God is saying, hold on, I need you to do something in Babylon. I need you to begin to change the atmosphere of Babylon. If you're my people, then act like my people. Stop thinking about yourselves and dwell, garden, multiply, live, and be at peace because I am your God, not because of where you are at. Some of these verses are not fair. They don't seem right. You can look at it and say, God abandoned his people. And sometimes some of you have felt like God has abandoned you. And I'm here to tell you that God has never abandoned you. Maybe you felt like you've been punished by God because things didn't happen the way that you thought that they should happen, or maybe it just didn't play out the way you wanted it to play out. Can you relate? That's how these people were feeling. But sometimes we think that God is such a good God. He has to rescue me. He has to come out of this. Only God gives good things, not the bad things. No, I believe that we live in a dark and dreary world. We live in the world ruled by Satan, but yet we are not of this world, church. And so remember that when we are anointed to live in a world that is dark and hard, we have a God on our side that says, hey, I need you to live in the hard places. I need you to plant and sow in hard ground. I need you to breathe life back into dead places and I need you to pray on behalf of those that can't pray for themselves. That's what he was asking these people to do. And I believe that today, maybe you're looking at your circumstance and you're saying, where's God? Where is he? But God is saying, I'm right here, but I need you to get off of you and I need you to step into all that I have for you on your mission. You see, God wants to bless you. He wants to pour out for you. God's not going to ask you to do something that he won't provide for. He's not going to ask you to do hard places or be in hard things, uncomfortable situations, very broken places without holding your hand, being your counselor, being your provider, being the one that will lead you and guide you. You see, he has the plan in play. We just got to get on what God's doing and get off of what we're doing. God is on this earth. He is at work and he is using us for his work. So we need to ask different questions like, where are you, God, and how have you abandoned me? Maybe we need to start asking questions like, what is my place in this, God? What do you have me to do in the moment and in the place you have me in? Those are things that God can work with. If God has somewhere for you to be, then he will provide for you in that place. Just as he said to these people. See, women, we are at miss fear changers. You probably heard that saying, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. It's very true. I know that when I am on a rage because somebody didn't clean something or somebody's bothering me around the house, all of a sudden my children scatter and I don't know where anybody is. And I'm like, hey guys, where are you at? They're hiding from mom because mom's in a mood. And so we can change an atmosphere and it's up to us with what atmosphere we create. We can create the atmosphere of beauty and love and flourishing and multiplication. We talked about sowing seeds, we can sow seeds of beauty and rest and, and goodness, or we can sow panic, chaos, and fear into the people around us, into our workplaces, into our school, into everywhere God has us planted. So many times we're looking for the way out, but maybe God's saying, I need you to stop looking for the way out and I need you to settle into where you're at. I need you to be comfortable in the places that you don't want to be in because that's where I am. So do you want to be where God is or do you want to be what's more comfortable? 
I'm asking you that question. You see, I believe the Lord is asking people to change the environment into which we find ourselves in. This world is not gonna give us comfortable places to live. It's not gonna give us comfortable situations to have to navigate in. But I will tell you this, you have a God on your side that will never leave you nor forsake you. He's got you covered. If you're there and you find yourself there, trust him, believe in him because he will be your deliverer and your rescuer. You can find joy in the midst of trial. You can be standing, well, everybody else is laying down and hurting. You could be their strength. You could be there praying something through. Jeremiah was saying to them, live, flourish, multiply. Those are all encouraging words, but nobody wants to hear those encouraging words in places they don't want to stay. Sometimes God is going to ask us to stay in hard places and do things we don't want to do, but he's going to bless us with life, with flourishing, over, overflow, with outpouring of his goodness. He's going to bless us with the love of God. He's going to abound before us. And yet we're going to find ourselves in places that we don't want to live and, and in relationships we don't want to stay in and, and things that, God, really God, what are you doing? You see, God's people, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, we should be a people that can live anywhere because we know that we can flourish under the presence of the Almighty. It takes a heart that trusts the word of God. These people had to know that God was God and that he was going to come through for them and that it takes a heart to seek after him. We've got to run after the things of God, not allow the things of this world to come and taint us and speak to our hearts and pull us away from what God has us on mission for. He looks at the heart. God is after our hearts. The other point in this that I see that God is saying is that God does not forget about us. That's good news. He knew exactly where his people were. He knew exactly where to send Jeremiah. He knew exactly what he was doing. They didn't understand it, but he did. He doesn't ever leave you. He never forsakes you. God covers you and he will bring a peace with that. He will provide peace in those situations. Go with me to Jeremiah 29, seven. And it says, seek peace and well-being for the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. Those are hard things that God is asking them to do. For in its peace, well-being, you will have peace. You see, when we do things God's way, we're promised blessing. We're promised peace. You see, peace isn't only when things are comfortable. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you the opposite. I wish I could say to you, hey, it's in those comfortable places that you're going to have rest and peace. No, it's actually in the uncomfortable places that we find the peace of God. It's actually in the places of unrest that we seek him and we find our rest. And you see, God is the answer to all of the uncomfortable places. And we may need to take the next part of our lives and say, okay, Lord, maybe it's not what I want, but what do you want from me in my family, in my kids? How do you want us to flourish where you have us right now? Instead of running from the problem, maybe run into the problem and we say, okay, God, equip us for it. Give us an answer to change it. Give us an answer to change our environment, change our cities, change our neighborhoods, change the people that we serve and love every day. You see, God is living on the inside of you and he needs his people to awaken. He needs us to understand that we care him inside of us, that we are ambassadors for Christ. Someone needs to hear this today. Don't give up because it's hard. It's always going to be hard, but you're not alone. You have the God of angel armies backing you on your side, on your team, and this may be part of the plan, so trust the plan. Walk through the plan with God. Get in your word. Pray. Get with people that will build you up with like faith. You are not forgotten. Those are lies from the devil and do not believe them. Remember God is with you and that he has all that you need, but you've got to seek him. Girls, let's be women that run after God, even in the hard places. Let's be girls that feed on his word. Let's be girls that seek the Holy Spirit and are led by the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's be girls that talk with others about the word of God. Let's be girls that pray and believe God for the impossible. Speak to those dead places. Speak life back into their cities. Speak life back into your family. Speak life back into your marriages. You have not been abandoned. God is with you. So you see, God does his best work in the hardest places. So you are in the perfect moment and the perfect position to see a miracle from God, just as these people did. If you got something from God today, just give him a big thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing inside of me. And let's trust God in these places. Maybe you're listening today and you're going, you know what? 
I need to know who this God is. I cannot be in these hard places without him. And you want to get to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you this opportunity right now. It's very simple. All you got to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you've been running from God instead of to God and you want to just recommit, re just like take this moment to say, okay, Lord, this is it. This is my moment with you. I'm not going to keep going down the wrong path. I want to give you this opportunity. So go ahead and pray this prayer with me. You don't get saved by praying a prayer. I just want to make you aware of that. But this is a moment where you're just committing and you're, you're saying, this is it, God. This is me and you now. And you're making this moment of your life a change. You're turning from your evil self. You're turning from your sin and you're turning to God and you're committing your life to him. And so get ready. Let's do this together and pray this prayer after me. Dear Father God, I ask that you'd forgive me of my sins. Lord, I ask that you would heal me and that you would teach me how to serve you. Holy Spirit, come and be with me and fill me. Today is the day that I walk away from my old life and I become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Today is the day that I commit to you, God, that you are my Lord and I am your daughter. Thank you, Jesus, for all you're going to do in this new walk. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, I don't want you to do life alone. First of all, you need to find a local Word of God church, preaching out of the Word of God, a Bible-believing church, talking about Jesus and telling someone about the good news of the gospel. If you are in the Inland Empire area, I'd love to invite you out to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center to join us, and we are excited. Also, you can go to www.rockchurch.com and click the Get to Know God button, and we can send you some information on what to do next now that you're a Christian. I love you. Thank you for joining us so much, girls. We'll see you next time. God bless you.